Living Longer, Living Better is your television magazine highlighting lifestyles, hobbies, sports, health, travel, people, and places in our community, and much more. Information, ideas, and knowledge that will encourage new thinking and provide insights into our community. Plus, sharing fun activities of all types, understanding options for financial well-being, and making life more enjoyable. Join us on the journey exploring the many facets of living longer, living better. Welcome to Living Longer, Living Better. Today's show is going to be very interesting. We're going to talk about unique second homes around the world. And I get to host a show that Bobby Decker is normally our host. You know Bobby from her real estate show, from her radio program uh, on uh, 1220, uh, the Wall Street Business Network, and also, of course, her columns in, uh, in the Examiner every Sunday about real estate. So we thought we'd take you on a little journey for unique real estate, some of it around the world, and then we're going to bring you back home and show you some of the fabulous places that are here. So, Bobby, thank you for joining us today and letting me be the host. I appreciate it. A little switch. Yeah, a little, <laughs> little change of pace. That's right. But Bobby had done some, both some uh, articles in the Examiner and some uh, uh, discussions on the radio program about mm -hmm. some of these unique properties. And she started with some excerpts from a Wall Street Journal article uh, on castles in Germany. So uh, let's spend a few minutes talking about castles in Germany. Well, the economic picture has changed in the last 10 years. I think we can all attest to that. And, and Europe has not been without that change. They have felt it as much, if not even more, in some of these sectors. And France and Germany both have these gorgeous castles that have been there hundreds and hundreds of years, buddy, you know, and their families can no longer afford to handle them. So they are putting them out to the market and it's quite amazing. If you have one that needs everything, it can be purchased for nominal dollars, by that I mean hundreds of thousands, or even less, around 150. But that's because it's totally trashed inside. If you get one that has been really redone and could almost go off as a bed and breakfast, those go up into the climb up into the millions. But they're unique and fabulous properties that we don't see here in the United States because we don't have that history. No, this, this history stretches way back. And I remember reading the article myself and some of the some of the issues were, yes, you could buy a very inexpensive one, but you better find the craftspeople that Correct. know how to rebuild them. And oh, by the way, maintaining a castle probably requires those wonderful craftspeople as well. They don't do energy efficient windows. <laughs> <laughs> you better not be allergic to drafts because you're going to have that. And then you've got that consummate ghost. <laughs> and you know, that can either hinder or help you. If you have a ghost that's protective of the family, and they do believe in these, and they are, many of them have been certified to have these spirits there. But if you get one that's cantankerous and wants to always like create mischief and, and more scare you to death, that probably wouldn't bear well for the pricing. <laughs> no, but that's not, that's not the high-end, fully renovated, spectacular properties that have put millions and millions well, into know. to they make them decide to hang out because finally they've got a good kitchen <laughs> <laughs> you never know uh, all yeah. right so so we've talked about castles but there's really a whole area of, of second homes yes that the investment in second homes right now happens to be a, across the board across the world really mm -hmm. kind of the place where the bargains are mentioned a little bit about the economics and why we're we're talking about second homes not everybody's going to buy a castle of course no. and we're going to get to some local properties that are much more affordable uh, but this affordability is a key issue Very for second key. homes and vacation homes Very these days. Key. but what I'd like to point out is given the EPA, and I'm 
don't want to make enemies with anyone, but stringent rules. You've got the Coastal Commission, stringent rules. You've got the little butterflies that hang out, the little red-toed frogs that hang out, and they always hang out on the property you want to develop on. So that makes it extremely difficult to build. If you could ever build these second homes again, it would be very, very difficult and very, very costly because of these environmental safeguards and because of the restrictions in building. They, the building codes have changed dramatically as well. They've downsized what you can build on certain lots. And right, all. and you also had mentioned, I, I, when I listened to your radio show, mm -hmm. that the economics, many of these homes, you could you could not build them for what you can buy right. them for today. Exactly. Part and of it's the, 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 you know, the, the rules and regulations, but part of it's just the just cost alone or, or, or the fact that the, that market is still a little depressed compared to most other markets. Well, raw materials are unbelievable. I, I believe that almost one and a half times to two times the cost two years ago for wood floors. I mean, just phenomenal. And that added on to the cost of these 10,000 square foot houses houses or 5,000 square foot houses, you just couldn't do it. You just couldn't. Um, Tahoe, they go, well, you know, I can find a piece of land near the water. If, if you can find a, a piece of land near Lake Tahoe, right on Lake Tahoe right now, that you could do something magnificent with, <laughs> yeah. I'll sell you a bridge in Brooklyn. <laughs> right along with it, because it's, it, that's right. It's prohibitively costly. So these second homes where people have kind of run into financial troubles or they, they thought they were going to have a legacy for the family and what they've done is said, no, we're going to let that legacy go and what we're going to do now is just trim things down, get things a little smaller, make our partnerships, make our... Um, our uh, family trusts smaller, and so they're letting these go in for great prices. Okay, well, we're gonna come back and we're gonna talk to you about some beautiful homes and, and second homes in France. Again, they're gonna be kind of the pricey ones, but fun to look at nonetheless. Mm -hmm. So thanks, Bobby, for giving us kind of the basic insights on what's going on here in the second market. And when we come back, stay with us. You'll see some beautiful properties along the French Riviera. Bobby Decker is a realtor that cares about community. Few things say more about Bobby's commitment than her support of many of our local charities. One of my favorite things to do is to give back to nonprofits that are in our communities. Peninsula Humane Society, which takes care of our furry little friends, making sure none of them are abandoned. To Career Closet, which makes sure that the women who go there are outfitted with clothes so that they can get jobs. To College Track, which ensures that the students are not forgotten halfway through their college career. They have enough money to actually finish. And then there's Build, which helps miniature entrepreneurs become big entrepreneurs. All of it's giving back to nonprofits that make a difference, and that makes me feel good. Well, welcome back to Living Longer, Living Better. We're on that wonderful journey through some beautiful, beautiful, uh, unique properties in Europe at the moment. And we're gonna go to France, the French Riviera. We actually have the wonderful scenario that we were there for a little while. So we got to visit a few of these places up close and personal mm -hmm. uh, with our Sotheby's sister companies. And the first one that we're gonna talk about, well, before we talk about the exact home, the beauty of mo many of these properties is that they are old, but many are renovated and have all the most modern facilities. And we're going to show you a couple that fit in that category. The first one is in Cap d'Antibes. And this home, I have to tell you, has already been sold. So I can't give you a price on it because it hasn't been fully published as to what the final price was. But it was listed for 12.5 million euro. Um, of course, it had every possible amenity that you could think of, and on, on the inside, it was practically brand new. And the spectacle and the beauty of the, the property is, is wonderful. You can actually go to Cote d'Or Sotheby's uh, Realty, International Realty, and go through all kinds of eye candy if you care to. Uh, the next home that we're going to talk about 
um, is one that's very, very interesting. Uh, it's been a, a, on the market before. Are for we talking about the palace or are we talking about Le Colombier? No, Le Colombier. Okay. Uh, Bob in Menton. In, in Menton. Which is just outside of Monaco. Now, Monaco and Monte Carlo are tax havens. So do understand that the properties there are outrageously priced because they get a tax haven. And they're very poorly maintained. Just so you don't go there and get disappointed for what you get for your $10 million. But <laughs> this... This property is going to be a bargain. It's gorgeous. So uh, I guess you'd call it foreclosure in, in our vernacular. Um, they have a reserve on it for $9.8 million. As I mentioned, it was listed for $27 million. They anticipate that it'll probably sell in the $17 million range. The uniqueness of that particular property, however, let's show the... It has, actually... It has 14 bedrooms and 14 bathrooms and many, many, many staterooms where people are entertained, your libraries, your ballrooms, your living rooms. But the thing about this is internally there are some one-of-a-kind, um, I'm not quite sure which camera's going to get it, but there are one-of-a-kind murals. I'll take the back and you might be able to, to zoom in on this, but these one-of-a-kind murals that you cannot paint over, that's the catch on this house. You can purchase it, it's been modernized, you probably live in it very comfortably, but you may never paint out these murals that are considered quite artistic, pieces of art, actually. Okay, uh, there's, also, there's also a beautiful shot inside, okay. in the pool area, um, that we'll give you a quick glimpse of. And part of the uniqueness of, of that uh, home, as Bobby mentioned, is the fresco paintings. Now, I have to tell you that there's a tax benefit to that. Um, in Europe, if, or particularly in France, if you have historical uh, content, like some of the gardens here are historical, and of course the frescoes are historical, because Napoleon's um, great-great-nephew owned this house at one time, and he was an artist. And um, if you let the public in to see your house, uh, I believe it's once a quarter, you get a tax benefit because you become kind of a quasi-museum. So that's a lot of fun. Now, on to the next one. This is an extraordinary property. Um, well, I love what they do with their old properties. You know, it's, it's, they, they reinvent them. We call it reinventing in the United States. But this is a palace met, uh, materni, materlink, materlink. How can I say that in French, but palace, and, and it's quite lovely, it's on the Côte du Jour, and, and l the views, everything else, they call them chambres, which is what we call condos. So they've taken this beautiful palace and they've reinvented it as a lovely condominium project, and it's just spectacular. It sounds a whole lot better in French with chambre than it does as condo in English. But these are all the things that, as we grow older, we have to start looking at our antiquities, buddy. And, and we can't just knock them down. We need to use them. They kept the basic, magnificent building and then just recreated the inside. They have Ralph Lauren is doing the interior decorating. They have all these high-end people coming in and saying, well, that's what people like nowadays. And, I, I just love that because knocking them down just does not work. And that's what they used to do in Hong Kong. And um, I, it's my understanding that's ceasing also because they're saying, what kind of historical buildings are we simply knocking down to put up another 100 foot or 100 story building? I don't even know if they get that tall. I don't like going above three. Okay. <laughs> well, this, this was uh, just a unique. Uh, residents, we'd actually call them condos here mm -hmm. in the United States, but of course I think they start at 1.6 and go to 3.9 for your little condo. But it's a, actually was a palace. Now we're going to we're going to start to take you in in a, just a minute here. We're going to take you into something near and dear to our hearts. Stuff right here. Some of it's up in Gold Country that we're going to share with you because there's some bargain prices up there right now and some beautiful properties. So stay tuned. We're going to take you through some interesting and unique properties in Gold Country.
Bobby Decker is an award-winning veteran of the real estate industry. She has assisted hundreds of clients in Northern California to buy and sell properties successfully, as well as educating the public via her television, web, and or newspaper articles. As a former high school teacher of biology, my students' success was my number one priority. Now, as a real estate broker, educating and informing my clients and readers and viewers is my new priority. Well, welcome back to Living Longer, Living Better. We're having a lot of fun. We took you around the world very quickly on some unique properties. Now we're going to bring you right back to home. Gold Country in the Sierra Foothills actually has a myriad of bargains in this, in this day and age. Um, it's so close to San Francisco, closer than Tahoe, and yet it's not undiscovered in, in many regards. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you videos on four properties that will give you a little bit of the uniqueness of the area. One is about Pine Mountain Lake. One is about uh, Twain Hart, a very interesting property with yurts on it. If you don't know about yurts, you're going to learn a little bit here. Uh, then a small ranch that's got a beautiful creek for panning gold, and then a big ranch that's got some very historical background to it. Bobby and I uh, uh, have been up there, and, and she says, I don't want to be a cowgirl, but, uh, but she... it's a fabulous area. So fabulous please, area. enjoy these videos. Pine Mountain Lake offers all the amenities of Lake Tahoe with a few distinct advantages. It's a gated community with its own airport, golf links, equestrian center, as well as a tennis and a swim club. The close proximity to Yosemite National Park, a mecca for travelers from around the world, is another unique highlight. Two more key features that make a big difference are the one to two hour closer travel times from the Bay Area, depending on where you're departing from. Most of all, the area remains an undiscovered retreat, which provides value buyers that dream vacation home or year-round living on a lake or a golf course. This video will provide some insight on this gated hideaway. Well, I'm here at Pine Mountain Lake, and Larry's taking me off today. We went around and we shot ranches and we shot lakes. We shot Pine Mountain Lake, too. But this is beautiful Pine Mountain Lake Airport. If you're a flying enthusiast, a recreational flyer, I don't think it gets much better than this. Larry, tell us a little bit about the airport in the area, if you would. Well, the Pine Mountain Lake is a vacation resort recreation area. It was developed by Boise Cascade back in the 60s. And over the years, it sort of metamorphosized into a retirement area, a community of normal people with uh, children raising kids and uh, uh, retirees like myself. And the lake is 200 acres, skiing, boating, uh, fishing, uh, anything else we normally would associate with the water sports. We have a gorgeous 18-hole golf course, which is championship. Because we're in the mountains, it never plays the same twice. But to me, as a pilot, the creme de la creme is the airport. And the beauty of this airport is the airport itself is county-owned and maintained but the pilots live around the airport on private property and we can access the airport from our property. Yeah, that's that's exciting, uh, the, the kind of fly in, fly out community. There's not a whole lot of those around the United States. There's a, there's a few, but they're a little rare and hard to come by. And I've, I've actually shot a little video as we were going by when we landed and uh, see some of the homes with their beautiful hangars uh, uh, and their beautiful airplanes in it. That's a pretty special way to live. Also, while we were up here, this happens to be 4th of July weekend in 2013. And I will have to say your fireworks over the lake last night were spectacular. Oh, good. I hope you had a good vantage point for it. They do that every year and they do a nice job. Well, we did. We were up on top of Ferret Court, which sits up very high, so uh, it was spectacular. And uh, part of the lead-off of the activity was a seaplane came in and uh, does kind of a lands on the lake and does a little lead around of all the boats for a little boat show. But I still think probably one of the most interesting parts, there's lots of what we'll call vacation areas around, but one with its own airport is pretty exciting. How many airplane hangars are there here? I see some that are probably community, some of them are private. Do you have an idea of that, Larry? 
Yeah, the, the private hangars, there's 88 private taxiway properties. And then there are some hangars which exist on the airport proper itself. So we probably have a few in excess of 100 hangars here. And I'm going to guess we have pretty much the same number in airplanes because some of these hangars contain two and three airplanes and four yes. airplanes. And so uh, our permanent uh, based fleet up here is probably between 120 and 150. Hi, my name is Pamela Prime, and I would like to share with you something about the history of this property. Our first project was the floating yurt that you see here now. We had a traditional boat builder build the float, but then a group of probably 20 people came together to put up the yurt. Our second project was the treehouse. As we became familiar with yurts, William Copperthwaite uh, was a name that we had heard <clears throat> and we were told that he builds yurts out of wood. And so we wrote him a letter and asked him if we could come and visit him and talk about a project that we had on our property. And William Copperthwaite invited us to come to meet him. So Dave and I went to the East Coast and we had the most wonderful afternoon with him. And so he said, I will come and build a yurt. I'd like to uh, introduce you to some of the art on the property. And the first piece is right behind me. It's the bird goddess. We commissioned Judy Grossman, a local artist. Uh, the original concept was to make it look like a rock wall. But uh, as we talked with her, the idea was that we would hide within what looked like a rock wall words, images, all sorts of things for people to come and discover. So here we are, we're at Hart Valley Ranch in the spectacular Jackass Creek. There's a little swimming hole down behind me and we're out here panning for gold. Now I have to tell you that I'm a professional, just not at gold panning. But here's what I understand. I've dug some dirt out of the bottom of the brook here, the creek, Jackass Creek. You kind of swirl around to get rid of the loose dirt so that the heavy, heavier things sit at the bottom. And then there's little ridges in here that catch it. So as you dump out more of the water, you can look at what's in there. Of course, you always think there's something in here. That's part of the fun of hunting for gold. But the scary part is, there's something shiny in here. There's two problems with that. One is, it's shiny, but I'm not sure what I'm looking for, but there's also a thing called fool's gold, which has the same characteristics as gold, but isn't really gold. The good news is we have some metal detectors back there, and when I get this little guy out of here, we're gonna see if it's the real thing or not. But can you imagine doing this for eight hours a day in the water? Maybe in the summer, maybe in the winter. Some of this water really probably was raging this fall. I was up away and saw where there looked to be some bears. There was some, some, uh, some grapevines up there, so they love those. But our, our task today is to find gold. Now the trick is, don't lose it. Don't lose that little shiny thing out of here. To get rid of all the other stuff. Now sometimes the flakes are really, really small. But this has a nice little size to it.
Well, here we are at Lucky Star Ranch. Actually, we're down in an old mining village called Cat Town. We've got a lot of information on Cat Town. We're going to be sharing more with you as we go down by the creek and do some panning. And that both of these areas were just riddled with gold back in the 1800s. Well, we hope you enjoyed your video tour of some of gold countries. You can see there's just so much interesting parts, or so many interesting parts there. And they're not making any more land. No, and there's still some land up there. So yes. uh, please do go take a look and learn a little bit more about something nearby. Thank you so much for spending the, this time with Bobby and I on Living Longer and Living Better. Come back and see us soon. Today, Sotheby's International Realty, bringing new technology to a 200-year-old tradition while serving the San Francisco Peninsula, Silicon Valley, and clientele worldwide.